Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we pray that you had a good night's sleep, and uh, we're thankful that you have invited us into your homes this morning to uh, share with you the things that God uh, have uh, laid on our hearts to share with you. We don't take it lightly that uh, people have uh, are tuning in, people are watching and listening in live. And those that are you, and those of you that are watching also on uh, YouTube, uh, we don't take that lightly as well. And we pray that uh, something will be said that will be a blessing to you, uh, something that can uh, help you in your journey and in your walk with the Lord. Amen. So we've been talking about being lukewarm and what all that entails, and uh, we've been talking about the different traits of being lukewarm and what does the Bible mean when it says, uh, when it talks about being lukewarm. So if you have your Bibles, let's go back to the third chapter of the book of Revelation. There's so much here uh, that God want, to, uh, want us to know. And we believe that if it's written in God's word, that it's meant for us to get an understanding. And so many times people, they have God's word sitting in their living rooms, on a coffee table, or on their nightstand. And they may pick it up and read it every now and then, but... Uh, may not get an understanding. And so it doesn't mean anything to you if you don't get an understanding. You see that? How can you apply the Word of God if you don't understand the Word of God? And we have to know that if God allowed this Bible to be translated into our language, if He allowed it uh, to be passed down, if He commissioned these men of God to write and record His words, then we have to know that He wants us to get an understanding concerning His Word. Amen. So, the third chapter of the book of Revelation. And we're going to start back reading at verse 14. It says, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write these things, said the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now, again, we want to point this out that uh, lukewarm, when something is lukewarm, basically it's mixed. Sometimes we, you know, when we turn on our water faucet in the house, we'll turn it on and we want the lukewarm because we don't want it to be too hot and we definitely don't want it to be too cold. And sometimes we can assume that there's really a such thing as warm water. But what really what it is, it's a mixture of very hot and very cold coming out of the same spout. And that's the way so-called lukewarm Christians are. It's a mixture going on there that should not be. You see that? There's a mixture. All right, so let's go and keep reading. Verse 17 says, Because thou sayest, now, now he's about to go into why, uh, they're lukewarm or what causes them to be lukewarm he says because thou sayest i am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing you see that so that's the mindset i'm rich I'm, i am increased with goods and have need of nothing that means what he's saying is folks sometimes are so full of the world now you know it, it's funny how the church have adopted and i'm saying church people you see have adopted this saying that some people some people are so heavenly minded that they're no earthly good and I think that's a shame that's a, a statement from the from the depths of hell there's no such thing as being so heavenly minded if you were heavenly minded the way that you should God could use you in this earth to bring people to a, a state that he's called them to be in which is heavenly minded this Bible tells us not to mind earthly things so that, that's a lie from the devil. God wants you to be heavenly minded. That's all he wants you to be is heavenly minded. So that he could use you in this earth to bring people to him. You can't win souls if, if, if you're compromising with those souls. You can't win souls if you're in the same condition. How can I preach salvation to someone if I'm telling them we're all going to sin? What's the use of them getting saved if I'm doing the same thing that they're doing? You see that? But that's that lukewarm mentality that people have. You're so earth, so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. But when in reality, is 
the opposite is true. Some folks are so earthly minded that heaven can't use them. You see that? And so <clears throat> this is talking about people that are full of the world. You see, full of the world. that So much so that it negates or it cancels out their walk with God. Let's go ahead and keep reading verse 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable, and poor and blind and naked. So we went over being blind the other day. Today we're going to go over being naked. And what does that nakedness mean? You see that? What does it mean when it says you are naked? He, and look at what he says. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not. Now let's jump down to the end of that. And knowest not that thou art naked. Now, as you see me sitting here before you, I have clothes on. Now, if, if when people leave their house, if they have any kind of mind, they're going to get dressed. Why? Because they don't want to expose themselves. They're going to get dressed. But it's something wrong when people don't know that they're naked. Now, you look at these young people today. Not, not when we can't just say young people because now it's a lot of old people that dress like they ain't got no sense. You know, and I'm not going to say dressing like they're teenagers because teenagers don't have any business dressing, you know, with the attire of harlots either. You see that? And so just because somebody get older don't mean their mind change concerning what they wear. But look at the state of people today. More and more now, you know, you see nakedness out in public where people have their body parts out. Things that only their spouse should see, they're showing everyone else. That's blatant, especially when you know where it really comes from. They're naked and don't know it. And, 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 and really, when it all boils down to it, don't care. You can tell them all day long. You know, you shouldn't dress like that. Nobody, everybody don't want to see that. And so, naked and don't know it and don't care. You see that? And that's what God, God wants us to see here. Is that when people are lukewarm, they are exposed. In other words... I'm talking about to the eyes of God and to anyone that's living in this word according to God's will. That's one reason why so many people don't want believers around. And I'm talking about true believers, those that are walking according to God's word. That's one reason why they don't want those people around because they're, they are shameful of the things that they're doing. But when somebody's lukewarm, now that's the world's idea. You see, that's the way the world is. When I'm talking about somebody that's completely out in the world. They don't want to do those things uh, that are displeasing to God in front of God's people. But today, you have a bunch of church folks that try to blend and try to mix those two worlds together. You know, over the years, uh, when people have, you know, people have thrown parties, birthday parties, and they will say what kind of attire you need to have on to have, you know, to be able to come to their gathering or whatever, you know, whether it's all white party or, or you know, casual dress or whatever the case may be. They'll say uh, what kind of attire. And, and, and if you show up to the party not being dressed properly, you may get turned around. And so according to the word of God, if you come into his try to come into his kingdom not dressed properly. Now, somebody that's naked and don't know it, of course they're going to try to show up there. You see? Of course they're going to try to show up there if they're naked and don't know it, and then they're going to just get turned around at the door. And that's, that's where people are today, spiritually. Naked and don't know it. Everybody else that's got the eyes of God can see exactly what's going on but you. My grandmother <laughs> used to say, when you start smelling yourself, people, other people have been smelling you. In other words, by the time you see yourself, other people have been seeing it. 
And it's it's amazing to me, folks walking around, claiming to be saved and full of the Holy Spirit, and don't know that they're naked. Don't know that those things that they're doing is 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 leading them straight to hell. Let's go real briefly. Let's go real quick to the third chapter of the book of uh, Genesis. And then this is this will give us a picture of what it is to be lukewarm. Now, of course, in this in this chapter here, I'm sure most of you are familiar with it, that Adam and Eve disobeyed God because they ate of the tree that God told them not to eat of. And so then that both of their eyes were open. So we're going to start reading in verse uh, six. It says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desired to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now, that right there give us an idea of what takes place. When people come to God. Now, people can know originally what's going on as far as, okay, I need to get saved, in other words. And so their eyes are open to where they understand that they need to get saved, but they don't allow God to finish the work in them. So what do they do? They sow fig leaves themselves. What is, what is really going on? I go to church. I join church. And I become religious. Now, what does the word religion mean? In its natural form, in its original form, it means cover, to cover, or a covering. And so we see that Adam and Eve had a sense that they needed something because they saw their nakedness. And what took place? They tried to cover themselves. And they thought that that was going to fix everything with God. The same thing is true with those people that are lukewarm. They have to know that something's wrong. Other than that, they wouldn't be lukewarm. They have to know that they need God some kind of way. They have to know, you know, that, that what they were doing wasn't working out originally. So what do they do? They put on religion instead of putting on God. Religion says you can live in sin and still go to heaven. Religion says, as long as I go to church, as long as I'm paying my tithes and offerings, as long as I'm doing something in the church, singing in the choir, worshiping, preaching, then that's good enough. As long as I, you know, uh, adhere to what the pastor is saying or worship him, as long as I'm doing something, that's good enough. But what you do in this earth is never good enough. It's only what Jesus Christ did. And if you don't take on his covering, in other words, the blood of Jesus Christ, and know that you need that, and take on his word and his doctrine of if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you don't take on that, then all you're doing is covering yourself. With what? With your religion. With, with the precepts of man. Instead of the true fear and true relationship with God, you're just covering yourself. And that's what makes people lukewarm. When you cover yourself, you're still naked. Because there's no amount of clothing that you can put on that can wash away sins, that can take away your sins, that can cause you to live a holy life outside of Jesus Christ and having a real relationship with him. That's what makes you look warm. When you think you can do it on your own. When you don't adhere to the word of God. And God wants you to adhere to his word. Amen. We want to say thank you all for joining us today. We pray that something was said that have been a blessing to you. And we pray that you will continue to listen in to this broadcast. Have a blessed day.